I made a video recently about the portfolio that I used to enter Chelsea and in that video I said that I was also going to make a second video talking a little bit more about the interview process and that's what this is. I'm here doing that. Please excuse the hair, it looked like a Roman boy. Just before I actually start that though, if anyone's interested in applying to the school then I also have two other videos on my channel about that. So if you're interested, make sure you watch those as well. Now, my advice is obviously based on my experience in the interview there and the interview of the people around me. I've asked a lot of my friends about how they felt in their interview and like asking them how it went and the kinds of questions that they were asked. And obviously I'm not an interviewer, so I don't know exactly what it is that they're looking for. I can just guess based on the kind of shit they asked me. So. When I arrived at Chelsea on the day of my interview, we were all taken to a small room next to the banqueting hall, which is one of the like meeting or lecture rooms. And we were given a little presentation about the school and about the interview day and how it was gonna run. I had my physical portfolio with me, A1 folder. I talked about the portfolio in this video. Um, and then we had to go into the banqueting hall and it was set up with like lots of tables around the room. Each like candidate was given a table that had one tutor or like interviewer assigned to it. And we had to leave our portfolio on the table and then leave the room for like, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we all just sat outside the room and talked amongst ourselves and tried not to like freak out. Um, but during that time, the tutor is having a look at your portfolio without you. I think that's important because when you're putting the portfolio together, obviously it needs to be able to stand alone. Um, it's gonna be looked at without you there first, but it also should like leave some questions and should be a starting point for a conversation that you'll have when you re-enter the room. So yeah, you go back in the room, uh, go back to your table, and then the tutor starts talking to you and asking you any questions that they've had about the portfolio, and you just have a conversation. The interview, I don't remember how long it was, but it felt very, very quick. Um, it is just a quick conversation. It's not a, like a formal like job style interview where you're like sat with someone sat opposite you and they're like grilling you about like why you want to work for this American restaurant. It's just not like that. It's not their job to like trick you or like trip you up or get you to say something stupid about your portfolio. It's their job to kind of tease out your thought process behind a lot of the work. They are looking for students who, as cringy as it sounds, like think outside the box. Um, they're more interested in your process than they are about the final product. The final product is almost irrelevant. And also I think they don't really believe in any of the work in your portfolio being a final product because everything can be iterated on and worked on and improved. I think if you, say that a piece of work is finished and this is the final form of it, you're kind of eliminating the idea that it can be improved in any way. And I think that kind of attitude is not something that they're looking for. So yeah, they will just ask you a lot of general questions about the portfolio, about like certain pieces, um, why you made certain decisions, why you used certain media for certain pieces. Um, I was asked for one of my video pieces why I chose to make it as a video and I didn't choose to make the piece of work in a painting because um, a lot of the other parts of my portfolio were painting um, and my answer to that was that I had become increasingly interested in digital work and digital media and the medium represented a contemporary media as opposed to like classical oil painting. Uh, video is obviously quite a new media in the grand scheme of art history and I needed something that was clearly identifiable as intrinsically modern because that piece of work was looking at contemporary versus traditional so it's um yeah this 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 here. <laughs> The interview room in the banqueting hall is like a giant room <laughs> and loads of other people are having their interviews with their tutors at the same time as you and you can like hear everyone's conversations as you're in your interview. I was really intimidated when I first went in. Um, I'd like dressed really like cool. I thought I looked really cool at the time. But 
uh, but you just have to kind of like drown everything else out and focus on your conversation. And there's no point trying to listen to what everyone else is saying because what they're saying is not applicable to you or your situation or your portfolio or there's just no reason to listen to it. It's also like, it's not very loud though. It's not like you're in a really busy restaurant. It's just like, you know, maybe 10 people having a conversation at the same time. It's fine. And definitely you want to appear confident when you're talking about your work. Um, I actually practiced my interview a few times before I went. I would, well, after I, after I had made my portfolio, um, I would show it to other students or other art teachers at my foundation or like teachers from different departments like the fashion department or something and then I would just talk through my portfolio for as like long as I thought necessary usually like 10-15 minutes or something and um, I would just talk about each piece of work and um, parts about the work that I really enjoyed and thought that were successful and things that I think were less successful and what I would change if I were to do it again and I think that was a really good preparation for the interview so when my tutor was asking me that exact question um like find please find a piece of work that you are very confident about or something that you think was very successful i already knew in my mind which piece i wanted to use as the answer for that i wasn't sat there like mm, i don't know maybe this one like i just know equally the one i don't think i was asked this but two of my friends that i asked were um they were asked to talk about a piece of work that they think was not very successful or less successful than the other pieces so uh, going into the interview with like a plan of where you stand on all of your work and what you think are some of the more successful pieces, I think is a really good idea. You want to seem confident and like sure of your answers when they are asking you things like that. In my interview, actually, I was talking a lot about work that I wanted to make in the future. Um, one of the questions that I was asked was if you were to be accepted on this course, what kind of work would you like to make in September? And I thought that was a super interesting question because it shows them that you're thinking about your practice as a continued exploration, a continued thing, and not just something that you're doing for your foundation. It's something that you are will continue to do regardless of whether you go to Chelsea or you go to anywhere else or you don't study. And then after that question, I couldn't really shake that feeling or that idea away and I talked a lot about work that I would like to make in the future in response to the work that I've done and have shown in the portfolio and at one point in the interview he said like you know you're talking a lot about work that is not in this portfolio and I still to this day don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing so equally something that I said in the portfolio video about <gasps> Maybe I didn't say anything about it. So um, in the portfolio, it's a good idea to have work in there that you made outside of your foundation or outside of your A-levels or outside of any like prescribed course. It's just such a good thing to talk about in the interview that it shows that your interest in your practice is stronger than just the education that you're in. Like it shows that you're not just making work because you have to, because it's your course. You're making work because you are genuinely interested in that thing. So the first couple of pages of my portfolio were some paintings that I had in a small exhibition in France and we talked a lot about that like how that exhibition came to be and like the process of doing it and what I've learned from it and whether I thought it was a good experience or not. Actually it was quite an interesting story of how that happened. It involves hot tubs, grinder, south of France. I'll tell that story one day. Anyway um they're just looking for students who seem to be genuinely interested and passionate and excited about their own practice and students who will be proactive in pursuing and exploring their practice. The course at Chelsea is very different to a lot of fine art courses in the UK as far as I'm aware uh, in that it is very 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 open. There's very little contact time and there's very very little if any direction ever given. You're just kind of expected to make work and develop a practice and just kind of get on with it alone and you're really joining the university to gain access to a network of people and resources and you're expected to learn how to utilize them yourself and then use those things to develop a practice. So I think probably the biggest thing that they're looking for is that you as a candidate would fit well in that system and would thrive in that system. Lots of people wouldn't, it's not for everyone, 
and that's totally fine. A lot of people just want more for their money. A lot of people just want some like guidance and some structure, uh, which is absolutely fine. But if that is the case, then Chelsea probably isn't the right course. Yeah, I thought the whole day was super intimidating, but it's fine. Chelsea were also the last university to let me know whether or not I got in, so that was fucking excellent. Oh, the most important thing. Um, in my interview, my interviewer said like three, maybe four times that I had a really, really strong reference from my foundation teacher. I, I honestly think the reference was one of the reasons I got into Chelsea. I think it was one of the main reasons. My interviewer seemed genuinely surprised at like how glowing this reference was. So I wonder how much of his decision to accept me was based on that reference. Um, but the point is, don't underestimate the value of a reference. If you're doing a foundation, make sure that year really counts. Make sure that you are really engaged in that year and are very proactive in learning and developing the beginnings of a practice. I think if you do that, your tutor should see that and hopefully they'll be able to give you a really good reference as well. We don't get to read the references, though. I'd really like to read what she wrote. So yeah, that's kind of everything I have to say about the interview, I think. It seems really intimidating, but it just, like, it, it doesn't need to be. Just focus on your interview with your tutor. Don't worry about the fact that everyone else is in the room and just try and come across like you love your work. Um, try and come across like you are very confident in what you're doing and you're very, you're very willing and eager to be adequately self-critical, not to the point of being just like self-derogatory, but you are able to be critical and reflective of your own work and you're very excited to continue the line of inquiry and exploring those ideas. I think if you do all that and you have like a good portfolio, um, you've got a really good chance of getting in. But also, I think it's really, really important to understand as well that if you do all of this, you put in all this effort and time and energy and you don't get into the university that you're applying to, whether it's Chelsea or not, that doesn't mean that you're like not a good artist and that doesn't mean that you have no potential or you there's no chance of you being successful. Not all successful artists went to UAL, not all successful artists went to university in London, not all successful artists even studied fine art. And as well, the interview process is like 10-15 minutes. If, if you're rejected on that occasion, it just means that on that occasion, that tutor, that interviewer, did not think that the work that you chose to present and the way that you talked about the work on that day was right for their course. It's not a comment on who you are as an artist and it's not a comment on your potential or quality, just something to bear in mind. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope there was some useful information in there. A little bit rambly, sorry about that. Um, yeah, if you are interested in going to Chelsea or just any art school really, um, I have a couple more videos in this little playlist, this little series um, about the application process and about whether or not I regret my decision to study there. To study there. So they will be linked in the description box and they will also be up here. Okay, that's all I have to say right now, I believe. So enjoy the rest of your evening and I will see you soon. Bye.